Hey guys, it's Stas here with another video for Beer Co. Uh, today we're going to be talking about cleaning and sanitizing your equipment. Got some products here which I use uh, pretty much every brew day um, or getting ready for a brew day. Let's talk about what they all do. So I guess the first thing uh, we should uh, talk about is cleaning and sanitizing. What are they? and uh, why, why do we do them and are they the same thing or are they different? They're actually a different thing and they should really be kept as separate phases of your maintenance in your home brewery. Uh, so cleaning, that's basically the removal of any foreign uh, debris. It could be uh, dirt, it could be uh, protein buildup, krausen, uh, hot matter, oils, all that stuff that shouldn't be in your fermentation vessel or your all-in-one brewing system, mash tun, boil kettle. Um, so you need to make sure that it's visually clean. And we'll talk about what we can use uh, to do that um, in just a second. Now the second step is sanitizing. And what that's doing, once the surface is clean, uh, you then need to make sure that you're killing any um, uh, microscopic organisms or wild yeast, bacteria, viruses. Uh, so just to ensure that um, nothing uh, gets in the way of making the best beer that you can. Of course, um, sanitizing isn't going to kill absolutely everything. That's maybe the step called sterilization where you eradicate everything. Um, it's, it's really not uh, possible to do that, especially in a home brewery uh, setup. And basically you want to basically knock down the, um, the population of foreign organisms like bacteria, viruses and all that to a level um, where they're not going to get a chance to compete once the yeast um, actually starts fermenting. The yeast will dominate and uh, yeah, not give the, the foreign organisms a chance to grow. So let's go back to cleaning. When should you clean? Um, probably one of the most important things is as soon as you get a new piece of equipment, uh, be it a, you know all-in-one um, brewing system like the Grandfather or Robo Brew, Brownmeister, that sort of thing, uh, new stainless steel fermenters, the SS Brewtech bucket that I use, or one of the uh, better bottles. Um, anything that's been manufactured, you want to make sure you give it a good clean. It might look clean, but the manufacturing process, uh, you can get um, oils and contaminants from, from the manufacturing process. You don't want that in your beer, so you want to make sure you get rid of that. So, when you first get the new equipment, secondly, uh, the easiest time to clean is right after you've used it. So if you've just finished your boil and you've uh, put it into the fermenter, you put the fermenter uh, in your fermentation chamber, um, you don't. You want to try and clean out your kettle as soon as possible. If you leave it overnight or the next day, uh, even a couple of hours, the 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 dirt, the hop debris, the the proteins, the the oils from the boil, and the um, everything that can get harder and, and crust onto uh, your boil kettle. So I usually, uh, when I'm chilling my wort, I capture the hot water from my counterflow chiller and I put it into a vessel, um, my digiboil, uh, and then once the beer is out, I rinse it out with a hose and then put that hot water back in, put in some cleaning solution and let that recycle, uh, re recirculate straight away. Uh, it just means that I don't have to scrub so much and it actually comes up looking really good. So, when you get your equipment, as soon as you can, even, same thing with the fermenter, as soon as you get it into a bottle or kegs, um, you want to at least hose out uh, the majority of the stuff and uh, give, it, give it a good uh, clean as soon as you can. Sanitizing. So, once it's clean, when do you need to sanitize? Um, I tend not to worry too much about sanitation. Uh, I, I, you, I brew in a grandfather. Uh, sanitation on the hot side, so I, I make sure it's clean, but I don't necessarily sanitize my mash tun. Uh, and it's the same, it's a single vessel. I don't worry too much about the boil kettle either. However, I do recirculate the hot wort um, through uh, my counterflow chiller 
which has been cleaned from the previous brew day, so I know it's pretty clean. Um, so that the heat, 100 degree work pumping through, will uh, ensure that this, the um, the counter flow chiller and the and the boiler is uh, sanitized and going to get rid of any bacteria or nasties that might be uh, in there. But you need to make sure that your fermenter is sanitized. Um, that that's a once it once it gets below that 100 degree or close to 100 degrees, it's a great. Um, environment for bacteria, ye uh, yeast, and wild yeast and other microbes to get into and really sort of mess up your beer. So you want to make sure that you, you knock away any anything that shouldn't be there really. So let's talk about the products that I have here. First of all, this is not PBW, it's sodium percarbonate, I just needed a, uh, a container. Um, so sodium percarbonate uh, is a great option uh, for home brewers. Uh, it's a good all-purpose uh, cleaner. It's fairly cheap. You don't probably use it uh, one, uh, every week or maybe even once uh, every day at home. It's often the active ingredient for uh, laundry powders such as OxyClean or Nappy Sand, uh, things like that. So when sodium percarbonate dissolves in water, uh, it breaks down into uh, sodium peroxide, uh, which turns into water and oxygen. So it's really friendly for the environment, and it's a, it's a good general purpose cleaner uh, for you know getting uh, fermenters clean for, for sort of light to medium soiling uh, of your equipment. Uh, I've actually got a lot of. Uh, <laughs> Kudos uh, from family members who have, you know, you often have uh, vases that have this sort of really uh, dusty, oily residue on them. Um, bit of this in some hot water in the vase or wine decanter or anything, uh, it'll just dissolve it all and leave it sparkling clean. So this is a really great thing to have around the house. Um, it's good for, you know, De, uh, degreasing barbecues and things like that, uh, but there, there is a better option. The better option is what this container originally had, which was PBW. This is a uh, five star um, proprietary product, I guess. Um, and Kegland has also come out with their version, which is essentially the same. Um, it has sodium uh, percarbonate in it, but it also has a few other things in here uh, which helps to dissolve oils. So um, if you're only using sodium percarbonate, uh, it'll get things clean, but maybe over maybe uh, three, four, five brews, you might start to see a film or a staining on your stainless steel uh, kettle. I know I certainly started to see that in my uh, grandfather. Um, so there's the the extra chemicals in here which sort of break down the, the oils, uh, they're called surfactants, um, which help to break down the, um, the surface tension between uh, the liquids and the metals, thus allowing the oils to come off the metals. Uh, it's, it's a, uh, I believe this is a proprietary, that it's, it's pretty hard to find information about uh, exactly what is in here. Um, on the forums you can find uh, people hypothesizing about what it could be, um, but you can make your own version of this which will be close um, using uh, triclinium or um, trisodium phosphate or sodium metasilicate, uh, which basically acts to attack those oils a bit more aggressively, um, but it still dissolves into something which is really environmentally friendly, uh, so you don't need to worry too much. Uh, I mean, obviously, it's a quite it's an alkali um, cleaner, so uh, you probably should wear gloves um, because it will strip all the oils from your fingers and not do your skin um, too good. But it's not going to burn you like something like caustic would do. Um, caustic is a different topic. I don't really want to get into caustic for the homebrew uh, market because uh, it eats plastic fermenters and soft metals, and it's actually quite dangerous to have around the house especially with kids and things like this. So, um, uh, Stella Clean, PBW, and Sodium Percarbonate, they're relatively safe and quite effective cleaners to use on your brewery. Okay, 
So let's get on to sterilizing. Sorry, sanitizing. I keep getting that mixed up. Sanitizing. This is phosphoric acid. It's pretty much pure phosphoric acid, 96%. Um, now the reason why I'm talking about this is this can be used as a sanitizer. Um, the other, oh sorry, this Atomic 15, uh, also Starsan and um, Stella Clean, Stella Clean, Stella Sani, Stella. I'll put the information on the screen. Um, the Kegland version of Starsan. They're all phos they're phosphoric acid based sanitizers. I mean, you look at the ingredients on the back of this and it's phosphoric acid, 50%. And then you've got foaming agent and inert ingredients. So phosphoric acid is a great one to, uh, to use. You can use it to um, passivate your stainless steel equipment, um, much cheaper than uh, something like uh, star sand to do that. Um, and this is 96% uh, phosphoric acid and 4% water as opposed to 50%. So you, you get a lot more yield from this and this is a lot cheaper to buy as well. I also use this for mash pH um, adjustments. Uh, so it's multi-purpose use this one. But this one by itself, um, it doesn't have the foaming agent uh, that the Atomic 15 has. And that means that, um, you know, if you're, if I, when I fill up my SS Brutec brew bucket, just using phosphoric acid at the correct dilution levels, I would need to completely fill my uh, brew bucket to make sure I get the proper contact time, a couple of minutes, um, in order to make sure that was sanitized. Now the foaming agent, uh, what I normally do is, I usually mix up two to three liters of this stuff and then give the fermenter a good shake and make sure that there's foam all over um, the, the fermenter and that way I know that I've got good contact time to ensure that I've sanitized uh, my equipment prior to putting the beer in. Don't worry about the foam. Um, phosphoric acid is actually a really great yeast nutrient. The, the yeast can completely um, consume that acid and it's actually quite beneficial. So as long as you're not putting in heaps of it, uh, the, the, this really is a no rinse sanitizer, especially with the um, fermentation. It's not going to impact the flavor of your beer and it's going to do your yeast um, good as well. So yeah, that's the Atomic 15 uh, and there are a number of other ones as well. I thought I might also show you this. This is um, basically ethanol. Uh, what I often do with my uh, sanitizer solution is I, when I make up that sort of two to three liters, I keep about 500 mils back in a, in a spray bottle. I'll just get it for you. Yeah, so in a spray bottle that I marked with star sand. Now this, uh, it won't last forever. Um, depending on the, the quality of your water, um, you, you basically only want to use this for maybe a week um, at a time, then make sure you change it out because the phosphoric acid will uh, stop being effective uh, over time. In, in once it's been mixed with water. Uh, so, but I find this is really good for when I'm taking hydrometer readings throughout fermentation. I can use this to clean my tap uh, and sanitize anything that I might be checking in. Also, I'm putting in dry hops. I spray the lid and the gasket and everything to ensure um, that no bugs have gotten in. But if you don't want to use this, this ethanol, um, it's basically ethanol and water, and it can be used as a sanitizer if you want to, you know, sanitize your hands. Um, it does dry quite quickly, so um, because it's mainly ethanol, it'll evaporate, and any any uh, germs that are on uh, the surface that you spray, it'll just completely uh, kill or knock it right back. Um, so this is a really handy one too. I use comp depending on what I've got available. I use this and my little spray bottle of, of star sand uh, whenever I'm sort of doing anything that could uh, ha have a, that has a risk of infecting my beer throughout fermentation or after the hot stage, basically. The other thing I guess uh, I should mention is iodine or iodophore. Um, I can't seem to find my bottle, but I do have one. Uh, I <laughs> It's, it's basically iodine, that's another really effective sanitizing uh, agent. It can be used as a really effective 
a sanitizer. Uh, the only downside of it is that it really can stain clothes. Uh, if you're using uh, plastic fermenters, it can stain that. Uh, so although it's a really effective cleaner, it could be really good for uh, stainless steel. Um, but yeah, just be aware that it could stain things. Uh, its other use is uh, you could use it for an iodine mash conversion, uh, just to make sure that you've uh, converted all your starches in the process of mashing. Um, but yeah, I just thought I'd mention that one as well. So I think that just about wraps it up for another video uh, where I've talked about how I use cleaners and sanitizers in my home brewery. Uh, big thanks to Beer Co for bringing you this video. If you have any questions that I maybe didn't answer or you, you want some uh, further advice, feel free to leave uh, comments below and I'll make sure that uh, either myself or Dermot or one of the team uh, get back to you as soon as I can. I have a link to uh, all of these products in the description down below. And if you use the coupon code CLEAN, uh, you'll get a 10% off your total purchase for a one-time use. So until next time, this has been Stas from Stas Brewing, brought to you by Beerco. See you in the next video. Cheers.